Hi, this is Ahmed Alogaili and Manos Berlakis presenting case 239 for the Manual of CTO Interventions. This is a case illustrating the utility of cardiac CT for planning and performing CTO PCI. The patient was a very young man who had undergone PCI of the right coronary artery and the LAD, but despite that, he continued to have chest discomfort. He was sent for PCI of the ramus branch, and this is the coronary angiogram. He had this very large vessel on the lateral ward, which seemed to be the ramus branch. However, the origin proximally was not entirely clear. We can see here the circumflex, we can see the LAD, the origin of that brand seems to be unclear. And same here, we do see the occluded vessel reconstituted distally, but it's hard to understand where is it coming proximally. And this is the spider view, in which we do see a ramus branch. However, it is unclear where exactly this is going and if this is the one that is connecting with the occluded segment. So we have a situation in which we have an ambiguous proximal cap, which is uh, one of the first steps when assessing the angiogram in patients with coronary CTOs. And there are different ways to get around this. We can uh, do either dissection re-entry techniques, the move the cap techniques, we can use IVUS in a side branch, or another option is to go retrograde or do a cardiac CT to clarify the ambiguity. And this is exactly what was done in our case. And it was actually extremely useful. Here we can see the LAD, this is the circumflex, and this is the ramus, and there is the occlusion. So actually the little branch that we saw originating between the LAD and the circumflex in the spider view, this is actually the branch that is occluded and is a fairly short occlusion, less than uh, 10 millimeters, 6.7 millimeters. And the distal vessel is indeed fairly large with a bifurcation on the distal cap. So it's not ambiguous cap anymore. It is now much more clear that it is this vessel, it is the ramus, that has the occlusion. The occlusion, we thought it was 20, actually it is less than 10. There's a bifurcation of the distal cap and there are epicardiac collaterals that don't seem to be interventional. So based on this, our plan was to do undergrade wiring. Another benefit of using a coronary CT is that we could uh, determine what is the optimal view for visualizing the occlusion. And it was actually a very steep LAO, 50 LAO, 38 cranial. And by doing this, we can now see much, much better a separation between the LAD circumflex and the ramus branch, and we can see the proximal cap a little bit better. We advanced a microcatheter and did a tip injection. Again, there is a small branch that comes off at the proximal cap that makes engagement a little harder. So we decided to use a Gaia Next One wire since we knew exactly where we were going. And this wire actually easily moved along the course of the vessel and seems to be going in the right direction. But of course, we have to confirm. So this is confirmation through ipsilateral injection. And sure enough, the guide wire is inside the true lumen. One of the tips when uh, performing that injection is to be ready to advance the guide wire to confirm that indeed it is moving within the lumen of the distal vessel. After that, we predilated, uh, placed a stent just to the origin of the ramus branch, and that provided a nice result. We have a Timothy flow in this branch, and importantly, we did not have any compromise of any of the two major branches of this uh, ramus. So in summary, this case illustrates how the coronary CT can be very useful in performing and planning CTO PCI. In this case, we had uh, an unclear proximal cap. We were not sure if it was that little ramus branch that was connecting to the occluded vessel distally. And uh, coronary CTA helped us clarify that, yes, that was actually the target vessel. He helped clarify the course of the vessel. It was a straight uh, occlusion without much tortuosity. He helped us clarify the occlusion length, which was less than 10 millimeters. There was no calcium, which was favoring an undergrade wiring approach. And the CT also helped us identify an optimal angiographic projection to be able to visualize the proximal cap and help with wiring into the distal trilumen. Thank you.